Hoffman or good afternoon all. Uh, it's a new experience to uh, connect with you all uh, through this uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on uh, applications of mathematics in engineering. So today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, some aspects of uh, uh, mathematical analysis called uh, stability analysis. Yeah, yeah. You all are uh, from different branches of engineering and um, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, you all have done at least two courses in mathematics during your uh, first year of engineering. Uh, and uh, some part of this course is uh, difficult even to me, even though I, I teach mathematics, but uh, maths is very powerful. And uh, I hope that uh, in today's uh, um, discussion, I will give you uh, some idea that uh, where we use all this aspect of mathematics, how it uh, helps us to give insight. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Kiran Kumar Hiremat. I'm with the uh, Department of Mathematics at uh, IIT Jodhpur. I teach uh, engineering mathematics, uh, also to uh, maths to uh, applied maths to MSc students. So, um, so uh, let us start. Um, so let's start with asking question: What do engineers do exactly? Yeah, there are different branches of engineering. Uh, ask any. Uh, 12 standard students, what do you like to do? Many of them uh, would like to go for engineering. So what exactly is engineering? Of course, there are different branches of engineering like computer science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering, and new branches like uh, information communication technologies, uh, nanotechnologies, biotechnologies. But if you see, in a sense, all these engineers they are trying to solve some problem, some applied problem, some problem surrounding to uh, them. And then uh, to apply that, they need to use the principles of science and mathematics. And not only they need to build a model, but they need to also build the solutions. And it's said that uh, if uh, engineers uh, find no problem to solve, they create their own problem, and then uh, try to solve this. Uh, one of such problems is obviously uh, is air pollution due to uh, uh, use or excess use of uh, vehicles or uh, some chemical problems. Yeah. But uh, in a sense, uh, what engineers do is uh, they solve problems. But uh, if you ask the question, what do good engineers do exactly? Then the answer is different. Good engineers not only solve problem, but they also see that whether the solution is really the best solution, the optimal solution. Yeah. It, it should not happen that their solution will create some other problem. So they do the analysis, uh, the stability analysis of their solution. So roughly speaking, what is mean by stability analysis? For example, suppose uh, you have designed an uh, air conditioner, which is supposed to work at um, uh, 50 hertz uh, to 30 volt. But what will happen if input voltage is 330 or suddenly it drops to 180? Will my machine uh, stop working? If it stop working, will it be dysfunctional for all? Or it will simply stop and when the optimal conditions are restored, it again uh, starts working. This is very, very important. For example, uh, we do this uh, very often without thinking. Uh, if you are driving a car or a, a two-wheeler, it's not that even though the road is straight, you are always going straight. Yeah? Uh, due to the lot of uh, small perturbations, the dynamics of the vehicle changes, but you automatically take the counteraction so that the dynamics is again preserved. So this uh, stability aspect of engineering problem is very important. And uh, in this webinar, uh, I want to uh, highlight this point and then uh, give you some tools that how this uh, stability analysis is done. And uh, while doing this stability analysis, uh, how can you use the maths that we have learned uh, in your engineering mathematics course? So for example, I'm taking a model of population dynamics. 
we all know that uh, these days covid is in the news everyone is concerned that after uh, opening the lockdown number of cases are so it's a big question on everyone's mind that uh, when this thing will stop and how this thing will stop what are the options available to us so as to reduce the growth of the spread of virus or to control the growth of this virus this is the classic engineering problems if you ask me what is the difference between us and other intelligent human animals the difference is that our ability to use tools and engineer the solutions other species they are relying on nature to solve their problems but engineers use those uh, laws of nature to solve the problems to devise the solution so the in the same way in case of this um, uh, spread of virus so what kind of uh, control mechanism we have so let us uh, look at this problem so i'm taking this problem because uh, we all have a uh, intuitive understanding uh, for this situation but you will see that uh, many of this principle can also be applied to other classical engineering problems so uh, let's uh, see uh, this model of uh, population growth i'm talking about the general population growth it may be a bacteria it may be a population of human being or even it can be a population of um, electrons like uh, how electrons are getting uh, populated uh, in some uh, electrical systems so this is quite a generic model so let us say uh, n of t represents a population of a sample at time t and we want to see how this population changes uh, over a small uh, time interval delta t so basically uh, what we are saying is that uh, how this change of population uh, per change in time so this is nothing but n uh, t plus delta t minus n of t divided by delta t yeah. so this gives us the idea of uh, population uh, growth rate per unit time okay. now suppose uh, there is one population of uh, sample size 100 and uh, in time delta t it becomes uh, 110 so what is delta n by delta t it is 110 minus 100 by 1 that is 10 suppose there is another sample of sample size 200 and uh, population of this sample increases to 220 so what is the population growth rate for this it is 220 minus 200 divided by 1 that is 20 so in the first example uh, population growth rate was 10 per unit time and in the second example population growth rate was 20 but uh, some of you might have seen that uh, this is not a, a very logical uh, description because the sample size is also increased yeah uh, 100 becomes 200 and uh, 110 becomes 220 so there is really not uh, much difference between these two population dynamics therefore uh, we don't use uh, this major so this major is basically giving us absolute rate of increase so we need we are interested in uh, rate of increase relative to the population size so when we see relative to population size we need to divide it by n of t so this gives rise uh, to a relative rate of increase for example um, another classic example that um, everyone uh, says that um, india's gdp is uh, 7 8 9 10 whereas uh, uss uh, gdp is something like uh, one or uh, sometimes it is in uh, less than one but the us economy is very big so if you see relative to the economy uh, one percent uh, gdp is a, a big number there and uh, for our small economy which is evolving uh, seven or eight is uh, uh, absolutely must uh, it should be like eight and nine so the important thing is that uh, we need to see this relative to the population in the earlier example uh, if i see that uh, for the population of 100 uh, it will be uh, 10 by 100 that is 10 percent and for the population of 200 it is 20 by 200 that is again 10 percent and this makes sense both the populations are growing at the same speed so we use this uh, relative growth rate per unit time 
and then uh, we want to know the instantaneous uh, growth rate and this is where our uh, 11 12 standard calculus comes into the picture so whenever we are talking about uh, instantaneous rate of change we take limit uh, delta x tends to zero or in this case limit delta t tends to zero then the instantaneous growth rate will be limit delta t tends to zero of the quantity n of t plus delta t minus n of t divided by delta t into n of t so this gives us the instantaneous uh, growth rate now uh, the most popular uh, modeling technique of engineering science is uh, balance principle for example, population is increasing, it means something is driving the population. So this can also happen that instead of population, you can think of uh, uh, heat. If heat is increasing, means there is some heat source. Or uh, So we need to know what is the source. So what are the sources for population growth? Uh, one of the simplest population growth is uh, birth. Uh, due to new birth, population increases. So this birth rate per unit time, uh, let us uh, measure over uh, time delta t per unit population given by this quantity b which is nothing but number of births in time delta t per population uh, of n of t similarly if population increases due to birth there will be also some factors which reduce the population let us take the simplest model uh, there are no uh, migrations no immigrations or uh, migrations no new population is coming inside or no population is leaving the system. In that case, there will be some sinks. One of the sinks is uh, death. Let uh, d be the death rate, again defined in the same way. Number of deaths divided by uh, number of deaths in time delta t per population uh, n of t. Then uh, how the population changes over time delta t? That is n of t plus delta t will be the old population plus increase in the population due to birth minus decrease in the population due to death. So this R, which is B minus D, is the growth rate. Now, uh, those of you who are studying mechanical engineering, you will see that uh, we can apply the same modeling technique to see that uh, how the heat is increasing in 1D rod. Uh, again, you will see that there also we are doing the uh, same kind of uh, analysis. Now let us come to a, a specific model. All models involve some approximation. A model is an approximation of a reality. So what are, and it's very important to uh, think over about these assumptions because these assumptions uh, will make or break the model. For example, one of the uh, big assumptions we have made in the model is that n of t is a continuous function of time t. So and this n of t uh, can give us uh, non-integer numbers. For example, population uh, is really uh, wrong to say that 1.2. Population is either 1 or 2 unit, whatever is uh, that number. But we are assuming that it's a continuous function of time. Then uh, for the sake of simplicity, to start with, assume that the growth rate r of t is constant. Let us represent this as uh, r0. And I want that uh, you should keep this thing in mind and see what is the consequence of uh, this assumption that uh, population E or growth rate is constant. So as a result, uh, we get the population growth model, which is a first order linear differential equation with constant coefficient. dn by dt is equal to r0 times n. Yeah. So you have seen these kind of equations the same equation is for radioactive decay dn by dt is equal to lambda n right so same is the uh, equation for uh, rate of change of charges in the capacitor so uh, those of you who have already uh, done the uh, first year course in uh, engineering mathematics where you have studied differential equation you know that what is meant by first order differential equation linear differential equation we are in love with linear differential equation. They are very easy to solve. But the fact is that uh, nature is not linear. Nature is non-linear. And you will see that uh, we are not uh, good to analyze non-linear situation. So we need to use uh, some techniques. Typical technique we use is called as a linearization technique. So in the vicinity of some interesting points, uh, 
points to which we call as the equilibrium points, which we are going to discuss. We linearize the system and then see how the system is behaving. And that is where this stability analysis is uh, important. Now, those of you, uh, especially electrical engineering, mechanical engineering students, who will be doing course on uh, control theory, you will see that uh, this stability is very important. Just take the example of uh, orbit of a satellite around Earth. We want this satellite should be at certain height in the uh, in the space. So, but due to small perturbation, this height may change. So, corrective actions need to be taken because if it is coming too close to the Earth, uh, then some of the uh, dynamics will change. So, this equation one is a linear equation, and generally uh, for the differential equation, we need to specify some conditions to fix the arbitrary constant. Now, in this case, the, we have so-called initial condition. Suppose we start measuring population at time t is equal to t0, and at time t is equal to t0, population was uh, n0. So uh, this is the initial condition. And uh, this has very uh, simple solution. Its solution is given by this equation to n of t is equal to n0 into e to the power r0 times t minus t0. So here, Due to involvement of this uh, exponential term, this model is also called as uh, exponential growth model. Uh, it is quite similar to uh, this radioactive decay that we have seen or the uh, discharge of a uh, capacitor. You will see the same kind of uh, phenomena. Or uh, if you have studied uh, Newton's law of cooling, there also you will see that uh, how the temperature of uh, object changes with respect to time. All these involve this kind of uh, exponential term. So let us see what kind of results we get. Uh, for the sake of argument, uh, suppose the initial population is uh, 1000. Okay. And uh, let us play with this number R0. Uh, this R0 can be 0, can be greater than 0, can be less than 0. Now it's pretty really, uh, interesting question to say that why this R0 cannot be a complex number. Uh, think about this. Now, suppose this R0 is a real number, then we have three options available. R is equal to zero, R greater than zero, uh, uh, sorry, R0. If R0 is zero, then population remains constant, is equal to N0, nothing is happening. Uh, it's boring, unrealistic. Suppose R0 is greater than zero, then what will happen? Then the exponential term is increasing, and so the population will increase for example uh, look at these two uh, simulation results uh, for exponential growth suppose birth rate is there are uh, 30 births per 100 uh, population in unit time delta 30 a big birth rate i must say but uh, for the sake of argument uh, let's take this uh, number and the death rate is uh, 10 deaths uh, per 100 population so the net growth rate will be uh, B minus D. That is uh, 30 minus 10, uh, 20 per 100. So in time delta T, population increase uh, by 20. This delta T is in arbitrary unit. It can be a month, it can be a year. Uh, but for the sake of argument, uh, that is not of uh, important. So let us check that this delta T is uh, uh, per year. Okay, so per year, uh, in one case, population increased by 20, uh, and the growth is shown by this blue line. So it says that population starts at 1000, and as time goes, population is increasing. So roughly after three and a half year, population became double. Yeah, and uh, roughly after seven years, population become uh, four times. Uh, you will see that uh, right now. Corona uh, virus is also showing this kind of growth rate. It's called as the exponential uh, growth rate. So what will happen after this? This population will go on and on and on and on. It is just increasing. Is it possible in reality that uh, population will just go on? Or if we see this uh, uh, Corona virus, so what will happen? Uh, what is the population of uh, globe? around uh, 6 billion so it may happen that uh, bacteria
area uh, squared will increase first to 1 lakh then 10 lakh then maybe 1 crore then 1 billion and slowly 6 billion so what will happen after 6 billion will it grow so we know that um, in reality growth is always bounded uh, at some point it will uh, reach the plateau and that is very important from uh, application point of view that when it reaches to uh, maximum so what will happen if this growth rate is negative for example suppose the birth rate is five births per thousand population in unit time death is high uh, it seems it's a old population or uh, uh, population where there are more death rates uh, 30 deaths per thousand so in this case this growth rate r0 is minus 25 and the simulation result shows that shown by this red line that population start with thousand and as time goes population decreases and eventually it becomes zero you know, population becomes extinct but uh, we know that in reality uh, it's very rarely happen that uh, population in a small duration of time population disappear or uh, it increase um, exponentially so we have to take a close look at this model so what we see here what is the important uh, thing here is that if growth rate is positive population grows exponentially without stop if growth rate is negative then population will decrease exponentially and then extinct itself but we know that uh, this is not reality this uh, exponential growth model is uh, too simplistic so if we want to uh, see why it is too simplistic what we missed we have to look at our assumption yeah. so maybe uh, our assumption that uh, growth rate is constant is not right in fact uh, how can a growth rate can remain constant as the population will increase the way we interact with our uh, surrounding will change there will be uh, issues like uh, food scarcity uh, pollution may increase yeah, uh, or the economic growth will get hampered which will affect the quality of life which will uh, increase the uh, death rate and uh, eventually uh, population uh, will start uh, decreasing so this constant growth rate is uh, not a uh, practical assumption so we need to take a uh, take uh, we have to uh, change it so what can be that so suppose uh, this uh, population growth rate depends on the uh, population density so it means that this uh, rn which was a function of time only suppose it's not just function of time t but it's also function of uh, population for example if the population is too much then there will be a lot of fighting fighting for uh, common uh, resources for the life and then the quality of life will get affected gets degraded and population decrease if population is uh, too less uh, then uh, there is very less competition and then population will start growing if the population size is optimal uh, then uh, things will uh, uh, put in between these two extremes so in general uh, population uh, depends on the uh, population growth rate depends on the population at that instant so now let us ask what are the mathematical properties we are expecting from that this is very important especially for engineers uh, to ask questions so that what kind of things we are expecting it. for example uh, what we want is that uh, when population is very small then there won't be uh, fighting for the shared resources everyone is happy it starts going up so typically you will see that in the small countries population will uh, increase uh, the same thing happening with the uh, coronavirus when there are less infected people uh, it can easily get infected with a lot of people and then eventually uh, its uh, spread starts increasing it so when for small n this r of n is weakly depend on n so population grows almost like a exponential yeah? please remember the word i'm saying almost like not uh, exponential but almost like exponential <coughs> then uh, for moderate n then uh, it will be growth but uh, not as fast as exponential slightly lesser than that. and what will happen if there is a large population then uh, population should uh, decrease so once we have 
clear idea about our expectation, then we can see what will be the functional form of this uh, R of n. Then this R of n can be of the type uh, A minus B n. So let's take a close look at this uh, A minus B n. So what is A? A is basically the growth rate without environmental constraint. Yeah. If B is equal to zero, then uh, growth rate is A. So your population is uh, increasing without any competition. And what is B? Now B is the parameter which uh, it's a weight which decides the effect of increased population density. Uh, now you will see that uh, there are a lot of uh, models discuss about the growth of coronavirus. So why this uh, growth of uh, why there are different models? One reason is that because different models are estimating different value of B, uh, and with that uh, the model uh, changes. So with this uh, the growth rate of population will be uh, relative growth rate of population will be a minus bn or it gives us uh, this model which is called as a Perhus model or logistic model dn by dt is equal to n times a minus bn now those of you who have studied uh, differential equation will see that uh, this equation is non-linear because one n is here another n is here and there is a product of uh, this n but uh, this equation is uh, still nice. We can uh, solve this. Yeah. Uh, but before we solve this, uh, let us think of uh, some uh, interesting concept of uh, equilibrium population. Yeah. So now what we are doing is that we are thinking like a good engineer. We are not only interested in solving problem, but we want to also understand the problem and want to devise a solution solution which is uh, stable so, okay. so for that we need to do the uh, analysis of the problem for example uh, we need to see uh, what is the equilibrium po uh, population what is the equilibrium population it is the population at which uh, rate of change of population is zero so population is not uh, increasing so it means that uh, dn by dt is equal to zero or in other way, uh, this right hand side, n into n, a minus b n is equal to zero. From this, uh, we get two cases. One is uh, n is equal to zero, and other is uh, n is equal to a by b. n is equal to zero is uh, pretty obvious. If uh, population is zero, then it will remain zero. It cannot grow, it cannot increase. So it is not an uh, interesting uh, equilibrium point. So what about this uh, other equilibrium point, A by B? And what is the interpretation of this uh, A and B? Now this is where uh, we will spend uh, some time in uh, coming slide. Now here is a interesting question about uh, this equilibrium population. Is this equ equilibrium population stable or unstable? So what is mean by stable or unstable? Uh, so it means that uh, suppose if the population is more than the equilibrium population, then uh, if suppose this is the equilibrium population and the current population is more than that, then the population will only increase or it will decrease and come to that equilibrium uh, population. Now, this is very important. If there is more population than the equilibrium po population, then whether population will decrease and come to the equilibrium point or the vice versa. If there is less population, will it go to this equilibrium point and stay there? Now, this is very important uh, in many engineering applications. This is called as uh, stability analysis. For example, uh, uh, some students in our uh, institute, uh, they visited uh, TVS Motors uh, Chennai, they, where they were involved in the project of uh, developing self-balancing two-wheeler. Yeah. Uh, a two-wheeler, in fact, you can see uh, some videos on YouTube of uh, self-balancing uh, two-wheelers. It's very interesting concept. So take the example of uh, pendulum. Yeah. So this is a pendulum. It is oscillating. It is oscillating. Yeah. So what will happen? Uh, let us take... Yeah. So if I displace it from its equilibrium position, then it will oscillate and then eventually come to this steady state distribution. If I disturb it too much, then it will do more oscillations, but eventually it will come to this point. 
So this point is its stable point, but then it also has another stable point. This stable point, yeah. exactly vertically upward. So if I disturb it from vertically upward position, then it will go out of it and it will never come back to that. So this pendulum system has two uh, equilibrium points. One is vertically downward and second vertically upward. Vertically upward is unstable because if I perturb the system from this equilibrium position, it will never come to that system. Whereas uh, vertically downward is a stable equilibrium point because if I perturb it from its uh, position, then it will start oscillating it, but eventually it will come to it. So when we design engineering system, we need to make sure that uh, our design is working around the uh, equilibrium stable point. So that is the reason uh, I chose this topic to give you an idea that uh, how we apply uh, this stability analysis for uh, engineering problems. So uh, let us see if we can uh, get some idea about how this population is uh, changing. Let us solve it. It's easy to solve it. Its solution is given by this equation 4. Now uh, let us see the plots of uh, this solution. Because last time we take uh, this result and for the exponential growth we got the model that if R0 is positive, population is exponentially increasing. If R0 is less than 0, population is uh, exponentially decreasing. And what is happening to the logistic model? If the growth rate is positive, then population increases it and then it becomes stable around 1500. If population is decreasing, then uh, it will slowly decrease it and then uh, just stay there. So this looks more realistic. So the growth is not uh, unbounded, it's a bounded growth. So if R0 is greater than zero, then population grows and then reaches to stable point, stable plot. If uh, population is decreasing, uh, then it will just go on decreasing and eventually it becomes zero. Now, uh, let us see why did it reach to only this uh, 1500. So let us uh, change the initial condition and then see how the population uh, will get affected. Now, this is very interesting result. So here are the plots of uh, logistic growth. Uh, what is the effect of uh, initial population on the logistic growth? So you see that uh, if the initial population is uh, the first important thing is that irrespective of this initial population as time increases eventually everything is going to 1500 if initial population is more than 1500 then population will start decreasing it and then it reaches to this equilibrium uh, position if it is more than that then the rate of decrease is even faster but if the initial population is less than 1500 then the population will increase and reaches to this stable point same case here if it is much less then it will increase and then eventually reach to this so unlike in case of exponential growth where we were seeing the monotonic behavior uh, either it increases only or decreases only here what we are seeing is that depending on uh, initial uh, state with respect to this number 1500 population either decreases or increases now, what is this uh, 1500? In fact, uh, in this case, you will see that this is nothing but uh, A by B. If you see this solution uh, closely, what will happen to this solution as T tends to infinity? As T tends to infinity, here I have exponential to the power. Uh, this, uh, this quantity comes in the denominator e to the power 80. As T increases, e to the power 80 increases. So this entire thing will become zero and the population will be a by b as uh, t tends to infinity our population will tend to a by b okay. so we see two important observations here the first observation is as t tends to infinity n of t will tend to a by b irrespective of initial condition this is the important concept in system science called the equifinality irrespective of initial condition the final state is same one may be born rich or poor in India or in some other country, but 
one day in long run everyone is dead your uh, end is fixed it's called as the equi finality and this uh, a by b is called as the carrying capacity so carrying capacity is the maximum population that the uh, system can uh, sustain so this is very important from uh, design of engineering applications so we need to know what is the maximum capacity that system can uh, accommodate but we did this by finding out the solution then plotting it can we also do this uh, mathematically yes and uh, that is the beauty of uh, mathematics so this technique is called as uh, phase plane uh, analysis this, uh, this is another graphical approach so what we do is that we plot the graph of uh, n against uh, dn by dt how it changes so for example when n is equal to 0 dn by dt is 0 when uh, and increases dn by dt also increases for certain value of uh, a and b then it reaches maximum value then it start decreasing at some point it will cut the x-axis and then it will uh, go on decreasing it now uh, in this red part dn by dt is positive so positive means it's a growth then in this blue part uh, dn by dt is negative it means it is decrease and after this point, again, dn by dt is positive. Uh, uh, is uh, dn by dt? It is uh, of uh, negative sign. So the population is uh, decreasing it. So what is uh, important here is that you see that uh, what is happening uh, as the system is cut off from this n, it will go on. Population will start going increasing then it reaches the maximum then it starts decreasing yeah. so this 1500 is again this point these are the two equilibrium points of our system n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1500 but you see that at this 1500 if we put up system around this population is again coming to this point yeah. uh, let us look at this but what about this system if population leaves n is equal to 0 it will just go on uh, increasing it. It will never come back to zero and stay there. So that's why we call this uh, n is equal to zero as uh, unstable equilibrium point and n is equal to a by b as stable equilibrium point. There is a, a systematic way of doing this. It's called as linear stability analysis. This is important for uh, electrical and mechanical engineering students, students who will be doing uh, robotics. Uh, so what is this uh, linear stability analysis? So what we do is that first we find the equilibrium points of the system and then we choose one of the equilibrium points. So let us choose here uh, A by B. And then we see that around this equilibrium point, let my solution be A by B plus epsilon times some correction term N1. This epsilon is a small parameter and this epsilon n1 is a small perturbation from the equilibrium point. And we assume that uh, this epsilon times n1 is very, very small compared to uh, a by b, where a and b are uh, positive quantities, right? So what will happen? Now put this equation 5 in uh, equation 3. So dn by dt is nothing but this is a constant. Epsilon is a constant. Epsilon comes out. We have dn1 by dt. And here you put n is equal to this expression. As a result, we get this uh, equation. When you simplify, we get this equation. So let us take a close look at this equation. So again, this equation is nonlinear, but then we can uh, invoke our assumptions that epsilon n1 is a small quantity. So small quantity. So when I multiply this uh, minus b n1 to epsilon n1 so this quantity will be even small so let us neglect this nonlinear term so when we neglect this nonlinear term we get this simple first order constant coefficient differential equation whose solution is again in terms of uh, this exponential function now keep in mind that this a is positive a is positive means this is decreasing with respect to time so what is happening to uh, this system as t tends to infinity as t tends to infinity, n1 tends to 0. n1 tends to 0 means n tends to a by b. So that means this 
A by B is a stable equilibrium point. So whenever uh, engineers design any uh, engineering system, they have to first identify the equilibrium points. They have to characterize the nature of those equilibrium points and they need to set the system. They have to engineer the environment in such a way that system is operating around its stable equilibrium point. So this is a very important concept. So this is basically a broad field of uh, perturbation theory. So what is the idea of uh, perturbation theory? The idea is to describe the complicated system in terms of uh, simpler system. Uh, in what sense? Well, if uh, system is uh, not highly nonlinear, if it is weakly linear, then the behavior of the original system can be described as behavior of uh, simpler system plus some small corrections. Yeah. So this is uh, called as a, a weak perturbation argument. And by using this, uh, we have uh, developed a great insight in many engineering problems. One of the thing is uh, so-called uh, Stark effect in quantum mechanics. Uh, in the presence of electric field, hydrogen atom spectrum uh, shows tiny shifts. So they are calculated uh, by using uh, such kind of uh, stability analysis or perturbation theory. Another important thing is uh, weather prediction. So, which leads to a famous uh, Lorentz model. We know that predicting weather is uh, pretty challenging, but we can predict uh, near term weather quite accurately compared to the long term. So, this is typical uh, uh, approach of uh, perturbation analysis. You can uh, find more uh, things about uh, these systems uh, in these uh, books. Uh, where, uh, Plenty of other applications are discussed in detail. So uh, that was uh, from my side. I wanted to uh, give you an idea about uh, how we uh, analyze the engineering problems uh, for their stability. I would like to thank uh, Department of Applied Sciences, Jodhpur uh, Institute of Engineering and uh, Technology for arranging this webinar and uh, giving me opportunity to interact with you and uh, I wish you all uh, good health uh, take care of your health and health of your uh, surrounding people and take care of your surrounding thank you okay so quite a number of participants are here 227 thank you very much sir for coming and taking this session for the benefit of the people yeah and thank you for uh, organizing it uh, it, uh, I'm, I'm sure that in this uh, situations, this is also a uh, lot of work. Uh, all the best to you and uh, your team. Okay, sir. Yeah. So uh, then, uh, shall I leave? Calling you back to be in touch with you. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.